Welcome to Field Trials, a future farming webcast exploring innovations, issues, and perspectives in new farm technology. This is Matt, your Canadian farm kid and journalist host. Thanks for tuning in. It can be hard to slow down when the growing season gets rolling, but that's what has to happen when autonomous machines are involved. Today's conversation is with Dustin Burns, a Canadian farmer who has been working with Raven's OmniPower platform for several years. We discuss his experiences, why he's interested in autonomy in the first place, and how machines like OmniPower fit his drive for precision and soil health. All right, well, let's uh, let's talk about the actual experience. So you said that this past year you've achieved that kind of, you're able to operate two things at once. Um, was it, how did it, how did it go? How did it make you feel? Was it, I, I've heard um, particularly people um, when discussing things that either A, don't have a cab or something that, that has a cab that they can step out of. It's it's a quite a mental not a mental barrier, but it's a mental jump to be comfortable enough to do that. So where's your comfort level at? How did it work? Any problems you ran into or, you know, everything's a learning process. Just uh, how's the experience overall? Yeah. So it's been a process. The first year was, uh, um, you know, very bumpy, we'll say, but uh, we've made like, they've made great strides. Um, So this, my experience this fall, where actually I, I thought, well, I'll just give it a try, see how it goes. We'll do a few acres, you know, pick a block. It, everything kind of came together so well. I, I seeded over 900 acres with two units and it just, it worked great. If I had to step out of the cab for, for my, the drill I was operating, I could, I could let um, the Omni power carry on. And then I just adjust its speed so I could stay in, in t- kind of close proximity so I can still monitor it mm-hmm. both you know, somewhat visually, um, cause there's still like, that's the, probably the biggest limitation right now is where does, you know, we've got fixed field boundaries, but they're still working on the, the AI piece where the, where they can bring in perception and understand what basically what an operator does. Like if I'm going down the field and I see something, an obstacle, whether it's a big rock that, or whether it's actually, uh, um, say a person wandered into the field or somebody drove into the field, right. With their vehicle uh, right now, how do you do that autonomously and avoid a, a, an accident? And I mean, but on the other hand, I think, well, with auto steer on our conventional equipment and you get distracted doing something else is the risk any, any more or less, right? Yes, because is, is near autonomy any more dangerous than actual full autonomy? Right. Yeah, exactly. Because full autonomy, the the things they have to cover off or feel they have to cover off may actually make it uh, in the long run something, um, we'll say, safer or, or less risky. Um, you know, the, the machine cannot breach the boundary, right? Um, so if it does, it stops. Whereas, you know, if an operator swings wide and and swings a sprayer boom out into the ditch, well, it kills the ditch or whatever, right? Yeah. Like, so it, it, it yeah. may actually, there's no, we remove the judgment calls from it, right? But it does mean there's a lot has to happen in the background to make it work well. And so, so yes, through the four years, it's been uh, stages of, of, basically we had to have a dedicated operator on, we ran, I guess the Omnipower we ran was a, mostly on a, on a cedar, a 30 foot cedar. So, mm-hmm we're taking an operator that could run a 80 or 90 foot drill and put them on a 30 foot cedar. So we didn't really gain anything there. Um, but we got to learn and we got to help be part of that process and de- development. And then with spraying and spreading, you, you can have equivalent coverage, right? So the, the fertilizer spreader covers the same as a conventional spreader. It's a five ton hopper with uh, spin spreaders. So depending on the product, you can cover up to 90 feet um, in a pass. So you're not, you're not losing anything and the speed would be maybe not quite as high as the big floaters, but comparable. And same thing with a sprayer, um, your higher speeds, but not quite as high as our, our operated machine or, uh, yeah, operated machines. But, uh, again, maybe we can do a better job by going slower and, and taking the time to do, to just do that better job. And, uh, but again, you can have up to an 120 foot boom on the sprayer. So pretty, pretty common place in Western Canada. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if that answers it, but yeah, it's, um, I, I guess it, it sounds like 
you if if somebody in your case you pick those tasks very carefully with the understanding that some of them necessarily aren't going to be an immediate efficiency boon but if it's say more of a lower lower hanging fruit thing like just putting on some dry fertilizer or or, or spray or something like that that's a lot different than using a cedar um, but that i mean you still have to figure out how to use these things right so if and i know it's like seeding if you screw up seed or something that screws up during seeding like that's a that's a problem you know that's that's a big problem that maybe is yeah. a little more serious than some other things right so um is is there was there a comfort level with with the different tasks or was it just kind of a uniform like okay i hope i hope you can get this worked out um without uh without having to go back and make some major corrections or or was there a point where you did have to go back and make a major correction and and why was that the case yeah, so running an autonomous drill on a field that is a, a square or a rectangle with no obstacles is pretty straightforward. But as soon as you start throwing in obstacles and having to make judgment calls, especially like this spring, we had we had a, a, a significant rainfall mid seeding, mm -hmm. mid planting, and to run an autonomous drill in those conditions because you have to pre plan it all, you have to map it all out, right? And that's the that's the stage that I think is going to be the real challenge is. Um, it's going to be hard to get people to take that time and feel like it's good use of their time to do that preliminary mapping. Right. So how do you, right. how do you make, how do you deal with that part of it? Um, especially with changing obstacles, like, like low wet spots and not, you know, different areas have different issues when it comes to moisture management. But in our area, we have, we have land where it's, when we get rain, we get lots of sloughs in the, in the low spots and, um, that was a real challenge for us this year with, with autonomy, how to deal with that. Um, fall seeding is, is generally pretty straightforward because it's generally dry. So it was a good way to kind of test the water, so to speak. And so the operation, like the fertilizer application operation is very easy to, to manage. Uh, your boundaries are not as fussy. Um, your, uh, you're, you have no physical um, ground engaging tools. So as far as, um, you know, obstacles in the field, even power poles, you know, you just have to keep the unit from yeah. inter interacting with it, but you, you don't have to watch every single wheel to make sure the bearings aren't burnt. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so it's, uh, that's probably going to be one of the biggest challenges with getting autonomy into, into ag is um, how to deal with moving, like changing uh, obstacles within the field. Um, fixed obstacles are fixed obstacle. I mean, power poles are power poles, not moving anywhere. Mm -hmm. And the per perimeter is not moving anywhere, but, um, so it does require more, uh, for forethought and work up front before you can attack, tackle a field. So some of the things that, that, that are being worked on is, you know, and this is where I think we learned something this fall pairing, uh, an autonomous machine with, uh, uh, a manned machine is, um, you can, you can possibly use the operated machine to draw your boundaries that the autonomous machine then works in while you're doing the app applications. So you're not having to take a mm -hmm. separate time to do that. And you can also kind of pick areas. So like this fall, we had a couple of, uh, um, wet areas that kind of flooded out in the spring and had just weed growth in them, not crops. So they never really got harvested. So what I would choose to do this for, they were dry enough to seed this fall is I would just bypass those areas with the autonomous machine and use the, the, the machine I was operating to, to seed around or through those areas and kind of make the judgment call. So that's kind of the intermediary with autonomy is, is where it becomes kind of a companion unit to, so you still have somebody physically on the field making judgment calls, but gaining, gaining efficiency through that companion operation. And I like that companion companion unit. I think I'll I'll put uh, I'll highlight that for uh, when I gotta do the written portion of this later. Yeah. Um, well, that's cool. I, I, uh, I cognizant of time here. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, I guess is there a based on your experiences and, and a lot of what you just said. Is there kind of a message that if if you're talking to somebody that's going to um, or is interested in these types of things what would you tell them? Like, what's the elevator speech? I think I would think it would be, you know, you need patience and that time that you put in at the beginning, like what you said earlier, like that's, 
that may not be immediately obvious of the payoff of what it is, what the time it takes to map, make make it go around all the wet spots and that that sort of thing. Um, is there any other uh, major or any significant thing that you think somebody should know off the bat before they start getting involved and in playing around with one of these machines? And not specifically, not specifically the Omni Power, but just sort of anything that that kind of runs in that in that vein. Yeah, it's it's. And I'm I'm asking you because you've been using it for many years, so I'm sure that's all yeah. I imagine. I'm at, I'm sure I'm not the first person to ask you something like this. So. Yeah, and I can safely say we've, you know, what we're doing today is is feels like major progress to the first couple of years, but. The, uh, the patience is definitely key. And that, I mean, I think that the whole industry is going to where there's more thought and prep put in before even um, tackling, mm -hmm. you know, if, if we're generating prescriptions and, uh, you know, creating se uh, specific seed fertil fertility plans for different areas and not just crop specific, it's for areas, right? So soil sampling, right? We're taking soil samples and we're, we're generating our, uh, we, we don't do every field, but we do our general zones of the farm and from that we have to decide you know every wheat field doesn't necessarily get the same fertility pl plan right so this is just another piece of that where we have to take that extra time um where that time comes from if you can do it and do it in the in the off season maybe it feels manageable in the when you're trying to get the job done it's, it's it is hard right to mm -hmm. to uh to take that time and so that is the challenge um and I, that I see the the industry will be will be up against is how to make that a seamless uh, function. Now, one way that I see is that you do you like you if you can gain efficiency either through human resource or um, so we run ninety foot drills. So if we were to take and replace one ninety foot drill with three thirty foot drills, and have a person monitoring those or four, so say four thirty foot drills, mm -hmm. if one of them has an issue you're pausing 30 feet, you know, 33% or 25%, depending on how many units you're managing instead of the whole 90 foot you unit, right. To, to sort out that issue or even to fill it or whatever it is. Um, so does that, is that justify the extra time it takes to set up a field possibly. Right. But um, I'm, I'm sure when it happens, it will feel like it does. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like we're, the trouble is we're not, you know, industry's not there yet. And, and I, I think where it's going to end up going before we get to that is, is creating autonomy and more conventional units where you can flip in and out of autonomy. Right. So you, you, you can sit in the cab and operate it. Maybe you drive the perimeter to set your boundary, pick a sprayer, and then if you can set it on an autonomous mission, well, let's pick a spreader because, well, because Case has actually come out with that now, right? With, yeah. with one of their units. Yeah, the and so Trident. Trident. Trident, spreader, right? yeah. yeah. So it's a spreader slash, I think you could put a sprayer unit on it too. So you can go in and, and maybe do all your boundaries of your obstacles, do the perimeter, and then send it on the balance, the re, you know, to complete the, the, the center, the rest of the field. And then maybe that gives you time to either do some field inspections, go get some, go refill your, your, your product supply, whether it's a dry or, or, or liquid or whatever you're doing so that you can eliminate that operate, you know, requirement in your operation. And, and so perhaps that's the interim piece is we take a more conventional machine and be able to, to move it in and out of autonomy as, as, but we're still making, we're still on the ground making that judgment call. Right. And so that'll free up some of that, that prep, time that you would need to make otherwise. Awesome. All right on Dustin. Uh, I think we can probably leave it there. I uh, really appreciate your time and thanks for having the chat. It's um, well, uh, I'll, I'll have to bug you again about this kind of stuff because I'm always looking for, for folks in the West, my, uh, my Ontario centric brain, um, <laughs> my network out your way is not quite as, quite as, uh, quite as large as it is back home, but uh, yeah, thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. No worries. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. I hope you got something out of the conversation. As ever, the idea is to explore topics, items, and perspectives in the ag tech space. Uh, so if you're interested in sharing your own perspective and joining us for a conversation, feel free to get in touch with the Future Farming team at futurefarming.com. 
Uh, you can also reach me directly at Fur Rural on Twitter. That's at F E R R U R A L on Twitter or via ruralphilosopher.com. Thanks again for listening. Thank you.